The Making of a Shadow Priest Part 2 Goblins Divide She bore the brunt of the most malevolent magic that could ever be known. Yet, yet, her eyes still glowed with the light of a thousand supernovas, her heart still as gentle and as powerful as butterflies' wings, delicate yet able to force a tornado upon the earth. The effect of her glance is always pearlescent in his eyes. Yet upon her soul energy, the demons and goblins did feast. Her innocent and beautifying outlook on all things made it difficult for the shadow priest to acknowledge that the malevolent casters had returned. And for this reason, into her and his soul scars would be burned. The young shadow priest and Wiccan would often communicate through the crystal orbs and talk through the night about happiness for the whole of Thornville evermore. Yet one night, there was things so strange said, and the eyes of the shadow priest bled. The next day they spoke, and he lifted a black rose from under his cloak. You see at this time the shadow priest was intently gardening a luscious potion garden that would have any herbalist in awe. He hoped that they would go there with the Wiccan and the others, yet they would not. The chaos magic was too strong. What those malevolent casters did made it so sad, pitiful and sorrowful that the sight of each other would simply make them tearful. Although one of the reasons that the shadow priest took up shadow magic and never was fearful in the face of every demon that crossed his path in all the years that he faced evil's wrath you see, her whole family had been replaced by goblins. They fed on her soul and stole the wisdom of the academy and used the knowledge to perfect the transfiguration potions, all the while contributing to the menacing terror that befall Ogresfield. The moment he gave the black rose, after the night where she declared she was filled with dirt and a foul beast over crystal cloud messenger. The shadow priest was intent on reminding this Wiccan of the beautifying elements of her interpretations of the literature and how she helped history empower him. And of course there were others whom inspired him, others that he actually loved that inspired too. Though this friend was in need of reminding of the light magic in her soul that was so blindingly unblinding. She then replied, Will you walk me home? I mean, will you walk me to this house? Is it my home? I can't remember. Someone must have cast a spell on me, or this rose is just too intoxicatingly beautiful, she whispered with a gentle smile. So, they began walking home. Then he realized they were walking to the wrong side of Ogresfield not the side of Ogresfield they had all played in when they were younger and enjoyed caroling in. Things began to add up, and out of the shadows, the goblin laughter began to erupt. He looked round in panic, she was gone, and the goblin whispered, Don't listen to the siren's song. Yet, the chaos magic that had been used on him years before made him aware of the transfiguration all the priests had needed was an inclination to see through the malevolent magic. So he committed a shadow cast and told a lie. That was a siren, wasn't it? Now, he had to say that, so he could posit it to the others that the goblins and the malevolent ones had returned. And so he did decree their presence to the covenant of the shadows, secrets, and the motion they told him to wait, and that she would be saved. Alas, he was a fool. Perhaps she could have endured another day. Yet, she had cried for his help. His eyes had bled blood of blue, and he was not going to wait. He 
had enough of the games of the Covenant, their secrets always binding time to catch more, letting innocent after innocent drop into the fire. So there on the dunes, in the mire, he called out one of the goblins, even though he was the size of a troll. None of the ones around him understood his friends. The fiend tried to cast a malevolent shadow spell upon our shadow priest's friends to turn against the shadow priest. For a few moments as the spells were being cast and the swords clasped with the auras ricocheting from side to side on the grassy dune, they almost believed the troll goblin and spell the shadow priest doom. The shadow priest fell to the floor. He looked to his friends and implored them, Remember, we never condemn, we never hate, we are together, equal casters, equal, we are siblings of the stars. They stumbled back, released him from their grasp. Don't give your minds to idle men, echoed his mind. So did Boudicca's cries of freedom from tyranny, every aspect of history within him and a desire to protect. His paternal and maternal elements of magic that we all have. That's right, young Castor, we have both maternalism and paternalism inside us. It's not a matter of how you are born, it's a philosophy of how you live. And these energies synergized, his adrenaline level surged, and to his surprise, with blood upon his skull, he rose to his feet and coshed the goblin to the ground. The goblin vanished into a fiery circle that appeared in the dirt, and in a ball of light, the boy returned. Then the Covenant casters came flying up the hill, riding on their wolves, and attacked the house. For days they engaged in battle with goblin after goblin and malevolent caster, until lights flashed, the shadows broke, everything returned to normal. As if it had always been the ogre's field we all love. And the shadow priest was saying goodbye on graduation day. The Wiccans family there and they never spent time again. They never used the crystal cloud as there was so much sadness in their eyes. At least that's what the shadow priest likes to believe. Because beneath the seas of sounds at the graduation of six form magics, he could swear he heard the laughter of a goblin and the siren of a Wiccan with a butterfly heart and eyes of light that never dim. And this is why sorrow resonates within. This is why a shadow priest never gives in. This is why a shadow priest will go where no priest goes. This is why you must learn to smell a goblin stench. It's in how they laugh. It's in how they talk in how they hate and how they try to divide and so the shadow priest hopes the elder witch's protection spell never subsides prays day and night that it was the chaos spell that made him hear the echo of a goblin laugh ever vigilant growing ever older in a world of uncertainty his youth waning though not as old as I so young spellcaster, as we have spoken nestled by the fire. If there is one thing you should attire, it is that the desire to protect is the most powerful magic. That hate breeds division and allows the malevolent goblins to use their transfiguration potions and plague even Ogresfield, a town where dark magic is sealed.